Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to make a quick video on how you can use Studio One to write and record an instrumental metal song. So I've been stuck home as many of us are right now, and if you've noticed that I've been a little quiet lately, this video is probably over a week due now at this point, uh, I decided to take the first week off and just relax. I played some video games and stuff, but now I decided that I need to be productive and creative again. So for all of you out there who are stuck at home too, I hope that you're going to use this time to be productive and creative as well, and that's why I wanted to make this demo today. Now, most people are going to have differences when it comes to writing style, but today I'm going to show you how you can use a DAW, a digital audio workstation, to help you write and record a metal instrumental song on guitar. So today I'm going to be using my KM7 Mark III, my Keith Mara signature guitar, and I'm going to be recording in Studio One for Professional. Alright guys, so I pulled up the song that we did for the Ibanez Trem upgrade demo. Um, we're going to go ahead and just use that as a template. I was going to write a whole new song for this video, but for the sake of brevity for both you and I, I think it would be more simple to just go over this. Now, if any of you out there are crazy enough to want to hear me explain my whole writing process, uh, front to back, um, you know, with a whole new, brand new song going through everything as I would normally do it for writing a new song, then I will absolutely do that. Uh, just leave me a comment down below. So you can see up here, I got my Get Good Drums library uh, loaded up and I have my MIDI track. I just hit F2 to bring up the editing window for that. Um, and then I got Purple as my bass. I got this like pinkish reddish color for my clean guitars the reds the lighter reds on my rhythm guitars and then I got this brighter red for the uh, lead guitars uh, all of these gray tracks are the DI tracks I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of all of those real quick and of course I have them grouped together so I have to click alt to highlight just that one track and then shift T if I tried to do, let's undo that, actually, Control z and if I wanted to try to do that like that, I'd, you know, highlight all of them. So, Alt, Select to select just those, and then Shift-T will remove. Okay, so here we are. So, here's my whole writing process. Um... When I did this demo, everything was pretty repetitive because we were comparing a before and after. So if we just listen to it, we got... I'm going to repeat here. And the whole thing again. Yeah, so a lot of repetitive parts in here to uh, compare those things and... Um, I got my guitar with me to kind of play along with it. I selected a slightly different amp so you can tell the difference, you know. But anyways, let's go ahead and just talk through this. So when I was creating this demo... Um, and I like this. I think I want to flush it out into a whole song, um, get rid of some of the repetitive parts. But I always start with just a guitar with that I like. So that, that little bit. So that's just one of these, right? And if we just solo the guitars, we'll go ahead and listen to just the left. And then just start. So the first thing I do is I will track just one of the uh, one of the sides that I like this, and then I will go. Well, you know, I'll take a riff that I like, and I usually when I the way I write is to hard pan left and right, double track the rhythms like many metal musicians. So uh, I take that first riff that I wrote and I will go ahead and track it on my left side. And then when I get that down nice and tight the way that I like it. And again, if you want to see me do this like in real time, like take a new riff and write it and come up with something that is brand new um, and actually go through the tracking process too, you can see how bad I am. Just leave me a comment down below if you are that crazy. 
but uh, for now, just going through this one, uh, I went ahead and double tracked that riff left and right. And then you can see that these are different numbers, the track names. So I did track both times separately for before and after, but I did repeat, as you can see here, left guitar five, left guitar five. That was my fifth take to do that one. I did copy and paste, literally drag and dropped it over and then, you know, added some crossfades to make everything sound uh, nice and smooth, especially for that demo. Now, if you want something to sound exactly the same, there's no reason to not copy and paste it. I know some people really aren't into that, but if you want something to sound the same, like there's no differences in the technique or the playing style or any articulation, go ahead and drag and drop it. Just copy and paste it over, move it over, add some crossfades. But if you want slightly different articulations, you want it to sound different, absolutely, by all means, you should retrack it. Now, I just wanted to say that as a quick note, especially for a demo like this, I'm going to be probably as lazy as possible. I'm trying to get something going kind of quick. But this is just the writing process too. You know, when you want to come back and re-record everything, uh, you can do whatever you want. But as far as writing, I'll come up with a riff, I will double track it, and then, you know, you only need scratch takes, you don't need to get everything perfect. This was for a demo, so I tried to get it a little bit tighter than I normally would for just a scratch take, that's why, you know, it took me five takes this year. Um, so I'll go ahead and write a riff, and then the first thing I do right after that is go up to the drums, sorry, edit window, use the drums, and you can see if I s play everything. And if I solo the snares or the drums. So I will write a riff and then I will immediately go program some drums for it. I find that it's easier to track to some program drums than to a click track. So um, many times I will either do a scratch take and then program some drums and then come back and even re-record it just right then and there get a slightly tighter take or the first thing i'll do is um you know i'll come up with a riff and then program some drums to match it and then record it um, whatever works best for you i think in this instance i recorded the first take to a metronome and then i added some drums and i may have came back and re-recorded like i said but um as far as those drums go i thought it sounded cool in this case on this hi-hat on all of these to add this syncopated kind of note so I liked the first on all those colder notes and then that syncopated I thought that sounded really cool so um, in this case you know I have this open and then it kind of kind of goes to this pedal chick they call it and that's just to bring that open hi-hat back closed um it sounds more natural when you program them on the get good drum library like this you see it sounds like they're opening and closing it not a whole lot of didn't do a whole lot of uh crazy dynamics here um you can see you know there is some dynamic range of course uh, i added some some ghost notes not quite ghost notes a little too loud for a ghost note but um, there's still a little bit of dynamics if this was going to be you know a full flushed out song um, and i had to program the drums i would add a bit more dynamics make it a little more humanistic so now contrary to how i would want to record a band if i had a band come to me um I actually do the bass last. Now, I keep everything in order here on the left, top you know, top to bottom, the way that I would record a band, the way that uh, I just, this is my workflow. Um, I actually have this drum folder up here ready to go to actually track live drums, um, which I cannot do in my apartment right now, but um, this is all ready to go to track live drums. Got my uh, kick, snare, toms, uh, hi-hat, and then overheads, china, rooms, whatever. But... As I'm programming drums for these, I got that track, and then I got my bass, clean guitars, rhythm guitars, lead guitars, all that stuff. So, 
if you do want to, you know, for for this demo, anytime I do these kind of demos or I'm doing stuff uh, like this, usually I'll go ahead and just record the bass after I got all the guitars and the drums done. So here's the here's the bass solo. <laughs> Again, repeating, copy and pasted that part, but then it changes. I like adding in, uh, I like adding in those octaves, and then of course, you know, once you get here, the drums change. So now you got uh, some crash symbol going on there, and then uh, the bass changes. Now my bass is matching my my drums the most, and then rhythm guitars are doing that little. little bit there and all that goes repeats and then goes into the solo Okay, so you can see how there's cuts. Um, you know, I got like, here's this section and then this section. Um, when I'm writing, I will track riffs, you know, as individual chunks and then go to the drum part and then come up, you know, either I will, you know, record a part and then improvise out of it and try to record, which is what I like to do for the solos, which is why, you know, you got this small chunk here, bigger chunk this one and then this big last final bit um as far as with the rhythm guitars usually i kind of have an idea with how i want to uh, transition into another riff or add you know change the motif a little bit and just play around with that so usually that's always in bigger chunks you know four to eight measures at a time but when you're just writing you know track it however you need to track it to get the ideas out the way that you want to express something so uh, as far as looking at the solo, uh, let me actually solo it with the drums. So you can see here, you know, you can hear how even though there's these smaller individual bits that I recorded. Um, they each have crossfades. So if I let's take a look, uh, take a look right in there. Yeah. So I have those fades going on that way. It has a perfectly smooth transition. And the way that I like to try to write a solo is pretty much I will, you know, I'll try to have the rhythm guitars do something not so complicated. So before the solo, we had we had this thing going on. Right. And, uh, you know, that's a fun little bit, but I don't really want to put a solo over top of that because that'd be a lot going on, right? So... I just took the chord progression out of that and I continued just playing the chord. So just like that. So let's go ahead and listen. So same exact progression going on. And when you add in the solo, um, 
you can tell that it changes, but you don't hear a tone or difference. Um, you know, by itself, it might not sound like the best transition. Uh, it might sound kind of kind of off, but. Yeah, it sounds good now, actually, but uh, as I was saying, we, when I was recording it, it sounded kind of funny to just change from this cool, fun, little, uh, more, you know, note-driven kind of rhythm section into this chordal part, um, but when you add the solo in there, you don't even notice. just sounds like this natural progression and then the way that I wrote the solo was just by improving you know just improvising something uh, until I got something I liked so let me go ahead and change to this this is the lead uh, amp that I went ahead and used on my XFX so So yeah, I messed up right there. And that's why I <laughs> record in these chunks. Um, when I was writing, of course, I didn't know what I wanted to write as the whole solo. So basically, I knew I wanted to start uh, with this little run. That little. Um, I like to start a solo with that. I, it's pretty common, actually. Um, you know, if I can start it a different way, that still sounds interesting. I would definitely try to do that, but for something simple like this, um, it was good. You know, it sounds good to start with this cool little kind of run into the note that you're going to start playing around with. Um, so then that goes. Oops, see, I messed up. And that's that whole chunk there. And then basically coming out of that, I was trying to find something that sounded cool and I liked this. So I trying to get those articulations right. Um, I have a lot of specific kind of bending and vibratos I do in that section that I thought sounded really cool and that's why. I That's why I recorded this whole chunk by itself. Um, and then I was trying to, you know, basically I would, I recorded this bit and then I found out I wanted to do that bit, but I didn't know what I want to do. So let me just delete this for a second. So it sounded, it'd be kind of like this. Right, so there's that silent part. Um, basically, I would just keep playing along with it until I found something that I liked. So let's just kind of mess with it, so. Maybe I'll try something else this time. I'm going to improv. It's probably going to sound like crap, but let's do it. Yeah, so that's how it goes, right? Um, I didn't prepare for the key, so I play something that sounds like crap. I just start over. There we go. That was in key, but didn't really fit the solo. Kind of sounded kind of funny. So um, basically, you just keep improv and keep improvising until you find something that fits, something that uh, is the way that you want to express, you know, this, you know, whatever you're feeling. I guess um, if you want to, if you want to talk about uh, expressing your emotions through the music, because I mean, I guess that's what music is. So that bit, I actually wrote that and I wasn't able to play it all together when I first wrote it. Again, this is why, you know, I specifically, were, uh, when I'm writing, writing in different chunks and then you just keep practicing until you can play it, right? Because uh, I'm uh, not very good guitarist. So that part goes like, I liked that just little, little bit of, you know, I'm holding three notes and then just doing a pull off on three different strings. 
and then doing this uh this little tap pup with a slide. <laughs> Yeah, so that goes into And that ending is I actually like the most. Um it's the most simple part probably that I played. Um but I think it just really fit the end of this demo and let's just go ahead and listen to that transition. <laughs> Doing a lot of doing a lot of slides there to articulate those notes, and then uh, I got this little slide down. And then I got those two little dissonant notes that ring out together. But uh yeah, so that's how I write the entire solo. And then, you know, we got this little clean guitar part at the end that's just to kind of add to the ambience the ambience at the end of the this demo but yeah just to reiterate that's pretty much how I like to try to at least write a song, not necessarily go about recording the entire thing. But uh, before I get to the recording process, that's how I write. Um, I like to do everything in chunks. Um, it, I find this, you know, a very simple method to getting ideas out. And then this way, you know, if you have some new ideas, like later in the day or late at night or something, you can always come back. And, you know, if you were halfway done with the song, you can just continue you know, pick up wherever, and yeah, uh, this, you know, sorry if this is, as you know, as long as it is, it could definitely be a lot longer, I could have went in a bit more detail, but if you guys do want to see a bit more detail, maybe, you know, a, the whole process of writing, you know, a new song, go ahead and leave me a comment down below, and yeah, that's all I got for today. So that's how I like to use Studio One to write and record a song. Now, if you made it through this dumb, cheesy, progressive meta demo, then I hope that this inspires you to go out there and write and record your own music. I know that we've all been feeling anxious lately, and I just hope that being creative and doing something productive, whether it's recording music or just picking up a new hobby, I'm going to be getting into cosplay and making some armor out of EVA foam. But today, that's all I have time for. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or concerns that you'd like to see me cover in another video. And if you know somebody who could benefit from this video, then share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching.